Um, first of all, when the name Perfect Tux hit me, um, I think I was sitting in my, you know, day job at the time. And then uh, I was thinking about names for the business. And I have no idea when you, I, know, I mean, hopefully y'all know or some, some of y'all, you know, y'all business owner. When that, sometimes when that idea hits you, it's just like, you can't forget it. Like you just sitting there and he's like, hey, what's my, my perfect tux, my perfect tux. That sound good. That sound real good. And then the first thing I do, which is everybody should do, as I looked up a domain and see if it was available. It was like perfecttux.com. I'm like, I know this ain't gonna be available. Oh, it's available. What? Get out of here. Like, what? Go on social media accounts. Perfect Tux, available. Perfect Tux, available. Went to my LA uh, County uh, register. Like, Perfect Tux, you know, in the local area. If I was a, a doing business ass name or whatever. Available, available, available. I'm Google searching. Wow, no one has Perfect Tux. Oh, it's mine. I locked up the domain. I locked up the social media accounts. I locked up everything there was to lock up. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the 9% Show. As always, I am your host, Stephen Burton. And here at the 9%, we keep everything 100. If I haven't done it, not doing it, or not about to do it, it would not come out my mouth. So welcome to the 9%, as always. And always, like we always do around this time, we take a toast to the 9 percenters out there. Those wanting to be in the 9% Club and those that are in the 9% Club. Today, we are going to be talking about from idea to launch, how I started Perfect Tux. How I started it all that got me to this 9% club that's so, that so um, we all strive to be in, or at least I hope you do, that's why you're watching these videos. But um, I'm gonna, I, I, I took a good review of, of how I started my business and um, broke down like five key points and kind of, I'm, I'm gonna kind of tell my story and um, you know, and then how I, you know, how I, from from idea to launch, like how how, how I got to, to launch day with Perfect Tux. And a lot of times um, people that have business ideas and stuff like this, it's really that just, you know, getting it to fruition is the hard part. They're actually getting it started and, you know, getting that idea, that wonderful idea you had and not letting it fall to the wayside. Like, how do you get it to actual launch? And that's what we're going to talk about. So for those that don't know, I am the CEO and founder of Perfect Tux. Perfect Tux, we are the leading online provider of fashionable, unique men's formal wear, uh, perfecttux.com, and uh, been in business for eight years. Uh, we have a showroom and retail store in Valencia, California. If you're ever in the area or the Los Angeles area, stop in, say what's up, and meet me and say, hey, I'm a nine percenter, or I want to be, or something like that, and maybe, maybe we'll give you a discount if you whisper that very lightly. But, um, but yeah, so I've been, you know, I've been doing this for, for eight years and, uh, we've, we've grown and scaled to amazing things. And, uh, this is, this is, this is how we did it. This is how we did it. So let's get this thing started. So the number one thing was the spark. Okay. Why I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Okay. Um, I, I've, I've been an entrepreneur before I ever knew what the entrepreneurial word was, before it was even a hot and sexy word. Like I've, I've been doing the things of, I was, you know, selling candy at school. My mom worked at Nestle when I was a kid and we, I had all access to candy. I was the first one on the block with a CD burner when it was a two speed. And I was, ooh, I was DJ, uh, DJ skills during them times and selling mixtapes and all type of stuff. Like I just been on my hustle and my grind since I could remember. And you know, right out of high school, once I graduated, I started my first uh, e-commerce website, hiphopwear.com. Um, we sold during that time, it was the time of hip hop where you had to have your Jacob watches and your, your Gucci print this and your Burberry print that. So I had all type of hip hop inspired stuff and it, it took off. It went, it went crazy. Uh, from there I invested into a recording studio and the music bug hit me and I became an artist. But even as that, I was still an entrepreneur because I started my own production company and licensing company. Then from there, uh, got to go record and we did music music for TV shows and film and I was doing, I had my own publishing company and all this stuff and I start seeing the, the dollars of that side of the music business and I was doing that for a long time and I created JMGM Productions and 
uh, just all that type of stuff. And then as that kind of got me burnt out with music, I did that for about 10 years. And then I get to this thing of perfect tux. So the entrepreneur bug was always in me. And it was a thing that I've always wanted to be. And it was like, I never really saw myself working for somebody, but I was working for somebody in the time of doing music. Um, Hip hop where I'll get into that one day and why that died, but that ended up dying and I was chasing my music dream. And during that chasing my music dream, I still had to pay bills and life was hitting me at a young 20, 21, 22 year old. Life was, uh, you know, starting to get real for me and bills and things like that. So I needed a job and I, throughout my whole time at this job, I was like, oh, I'm about to be out this job next year. I'm about to be out this job in a couple months. Man, I'm popping over here. I'm going on this tour. I just met this producer. I just met this artist. I just got a gold record. I had a gold record delivered at my day job. And I opened it up. My boss saw it. My coworker saw it. Like, they were like, wow, Steve, you're really doing some stuff. I'm like, yeah, and I'm still sitting here working. So while I was doing that, I was working a regular job. And so like when business or when the burnout of music was real and I was kind of like, I was just ready to pause on that and I was like, let me get my life together. Let me get my money together. Let me get, you know, let me stack up some chips here. I was like, at that point, I do not want to work for nobody and I want to start my own business again. And so I asked myself like, you know, what do I know very well? And it was like e-commerce. I knew very well. Cause like I said, I, I, I did e-commerce before I even knew what e-commerce was. And then, um, uh, at the time, I just had a lot of menswear suppliers and connections like that. So, um, so, so that was kind of my why and just uh, knowing that I didn't want to work for anybody. And then also around that time, which I, you know, I did, I would say a couple years before that, a few years before I actually launched Perfect Tux, I did go down this, what was wealth and what was building wealth and, and what does it look like? And it literally started with me. I had horrible credit. It started with me wanting to get my credit right. And then with me, anything I try to, I try to do, I become an expert at it. I, 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 I research, I, be, I, I could teach a class on FICO scores. Cause I went from like a 300 score, whatever it was, to today I got uh, almost a perfect score. So I was like teaching myself about credit and teaching everything about that. And so as I've learned about credit, I learned about, oh, being responsible with your credit and, you know, bills and paying your bills on time. And then it was like, oh, savings and the importance of, you know, then it was like, well, it was like, well what's building wealth? And what does wealth mean? And Bob, I start reading books on this. And then I start leading me to like, oh, the most wealthiest people in America and like who, um, the millionaire, the millionaire next door was a very impactful book to me. And I was like, oh, the majority of the millionaires in America are business owners. And I was like, oh, okay, so business owner, blah, blah, blah. So all this stuff was happening while I was chasing my music dream and then working for this company and then eventually getting burnt out. Like I was getting my credit right, getting all this stuff and like knew what I wanted to do to get to that wealth point. And then like, you know, I, I got married and it was like, you know, life was life in. And I was like, oh, we, we were living in California trying to buy a house out here and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I just didn't see myself getting to where we wanted to get to in life, working for somebody. And even if I got a raise or whatever the case may be, I was like, I was just like, I didn't see it. I was like, I need to, I need to go like this to shoot up and go like that. That was my mindset. Okay. So that was my why. That's what, that's what made me want to dive in this to begin with. And, um, the only other thing I'll touch on really quick before we go to the next point is like, why e-commerce? Why did I specifically choose e-commerce and why I love e-commerce? Um, one, it was a easier entry to get in to start a business. Two, I love that e-commerce is 24 seven. I could sleep and make money. Okay. I could do, I remember when I, when my hip hop hair, uh, hip hop wear website, um, and it was just taking off. And I, I had my first, one of my first jobs that I was working at Macy's and I remember I was working there. Um, and I was making more money working there. I was like, okay, it's about time to quit for this thing. But I remember one time being in the mall, I bought something, uh, from the money I was making on my hip hop wear website. By the time I walked to the parking garage and walked to my car, I had made the money back from sales through the website. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. So like, I've already been like, e-commerce has been my thing, like from the jump. I just love it. How... I could just be behind a computer and make money. Like, that was, <laughs> it was very appealing to me. But like, you know, I just, I, I love all things about e-commerce. So that's why, you know, mainly because the startup, I didn't need as much startup money to start my business. 
And I knew um, it's just on all the time and it matched my schedule where, where I was at. Like I knew I, you know, I had a, a one year old daughter. It was like, I needed to be there for her. I needed to have flexibility with my schedule. I needed like ultimate flexibility. I was going to start this business. It was just going to be me by myself. Like I needed something that I could maintain and doing e-commerce was that for me. So that's why it was e-commerce and it was being an entrepreneur. I knew these things. Okay. So the second point we go talk about is identifying the gap in like perfect tux. Like where did this idea come from? And then where did I see the gap to attack with perfect tux? So unlike, you know, popular belief, I am not a fashion guy. I am not very fashionable at all. Actually, it was a, a wonderful podcast I listened to, um, uh, 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 How I Built This, and there was an episode on the founder of Zappos, which is a shoe, uh, big, big shoe company, uh, e-commerce company. And the founder on there was like, he did not have a lot of shoes or he didn't wear a lot of shoes. And I'm like, oh, but he's like, what I do love is customer service and acquisition and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm like that. I'm not a fashion guy by any means. I am not that dapper guy, but I just really love e-commerce. I really love digital marketing. I really love, you know, the customer psychology of completing an online sale. I love all that stuff. Perfect Tux was just a means to get me to where I was trying to get to in life. Just being straight up. Sometimes they say, start a business because you're passionate about it. Start a business because you identify the problem and bloop, bloop, bloop. Yeah. That, that stuff works. It does make sense. And don't get me wrong. Looking back on everything, I did exactly that. But my motivations was different. OK, I I identified at the time I was working in the menswear space where I was chasing my music dreams. I work in a menswear space and I was just starting to see stuff. I was starting to see from an e-commerce standpoint, um, like there was no mobile friendly websites. All of the, you know, people selling formal wear online was like really lazy. They, they photo, everybody had the same photos. They would use photos from manufacturers and put it on the website. And it was just like, I was like, goodness, this is a horrible shopping experience for buying formal wear online. Like it was just, it was a horrible shopping experience. Um, at the time, like renting online, like, you know, some of the companies that rent online, I ain't gonna say their names here and you might know who they are, but I mean, I don't know. I'm not gonna give them no free plug over here. But um, they had just started and the big idea in the formal wear industry was like still rentals, but do it online. And so it was just, I was just seeing how old and stale the industry was. There really wasn't new happening with it. And I just, I just realized like I could make a better shopping experience for customers buying formal wear online. That was my lane I thought I could be in. Like I could make this a whole lot easier. I wasn't reinventing nothing. I wasn't making my own tuxedos. I wasn't a custom designer. I was just like, you know what? I have these suppliers. I know how to, to get this product. I can get it in the customer's hands a lot easier than y'all can, than my competitors could. That's how I thought about it. Um, also, there was, you know, there was a lack of diversity in the formal wear industry at the time. Like all the photos, again, everybody using the same photos, but all these photos happen to be, you know, white guys or just, you know, I'm sure that people wanted to see what the, the boys look like, you know, this black, they, they want to wear a suit too and see what it looks like with these photos and things like that. Um, I didn't automatically 100% just say I wanted to be just, you know, Oh, we're black owned. Oh, I'm black. You know, I'm a black business owner and blah, black, 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 black. I wouldn't say I wanted to be all that to the forefront. A lot of it was just like, it was me and it was my resources of starting this. And that's like, I knew a lot of black people. This is what it is. So like, but as I started the business, I started to realize how much people appreciated the diversity that they found on our website. And I was just like, wow, that is a thing. So it was a thing of just identifying that the shopping experience sucked for buying formal wear online. I could make it better. And I thought like, you know, representing black folks on formal wear online was just go be something. That, that was my initial thing. Um, I also, you know, I was, I was thinking about other business ideas at the time, but it was like, I just knew I just wanted e-commerce and I knew I had these, these connections and it was just like the cheapest, entry 
to get into business that I knew I could do. Like, I, you know, I wanted to start a lounge in the club and I still want to do that one day, but it was, it was a lot of money to do that. And then you just can't go to no bank without any type of history and business experience and think they're going to give you some, you know, $500,000, like you, like you doing something. So that just was not happening. So that's what got me, you know, thinking about perfect tux. And that's honestly how I got there. It was just sitting there saying, you know what, what am I really good at? What do I have resources at? And then what do I think I could disrupt a little bit? What do I think I could do better? Um, like I said, I wasn't reinventing anything, but I just said, oh, I can do this a whole lot better. That was the premise. That's why I started. Um, the next step after that, number three was early preparation. So what was the first things I did? You know, first of all, when the name Perfect Tux hit me, um, I think I was sitting in my, you know, day job at the time. And then uh, I was thinking about names for the business. And I have no idea when you, yeah, I, know, I mean, hopefully y'all know or some, some of y'all, you know, y'all business owner. When that, sometimes when that idea hits you, it's just like, you can't forget it. Like you just sitting there and he's like, hey, what's going on? Like perfect tux, I'm like perfect tux. That sound good. That sound real good. And then the first thing I do, which is everybody should do, as I looked up a domain and see if it was available. It was like perfecttux.com. I'm like, I know this ain't gonna be available. Oh, it's available. What? Get out of here. Like, what? Go on social media accounts. Perfect Tux, available. Perfect Tux, available. Went to my LA uh, County uh, register. Like, Perfect Tux, you know, in the local area. If I was a, a doing business ass name or whatever, uh, available, available, available. I'm Google searching. Wow, no one has Perfect Tux. Oh, it's mine. I locked up the domain. I locked up the social media accounts. I locked up everything there was to lock up. Um, I just got that first. So that's all I highly suggest. Any idea you have, any, sometimes ideas hit me and business ideas hit me and I'll, I'll slowly creep and lock up. I have a, I have a specific Instagram account handle uh, that actually eventually turned into the 9% show. But I used to have a handle that I would always, when I had business ideas, I would log into that and I would just change the business, change the, uh, the handle real quick or see if it was available. Cause you know, ideas would hit me, then I'll, I'll forget about them and a new one hit. So actually when I came up with the 9%, what is the first thing I did? I was like, oh, oh, I show. oh, it's available. Boom. It's mine. Like the worst thing you want is somebody to take your, especially with social media handles nowadays, let alone the domain name. But, you know, your domain name and your social media handles, you need to lock those down because it's, it's, it's very complicated not to have that. So I knew that. I started to, uh, I had the full idea. I knew my purpose for it. I knew what I was going to do. At this point, I kind of like knew I was ready. I was going to quit my job for it. I was going, you know, I just, I saw it. It was no, it was no stopping me at that point from saying, I am starting Perfect Tux. I am going to do this. And I would say probably, it was probably eight months or so before I quit my job, like, Eight months, I got the idea, and I was like, I started working towards it to for the point where I was about to quit my job. Um, I started getting the dope, the, you know, the website, thinking about the design and what I need to do a little here, and I just start, I just start, you know, what categories I want to have, what I wanted to sell, this that, and third. Like, I just started working on that, all that stuff. I was working my job and working for me at the same time on the load. And now I got home at night, I was working some more. Like it was just, just doing everything I need to do, like researching, oh, okay, I need, do I need an LLC? Do I, like, what's the S Corp and whoop to whoop and you know, the business structure and what licenses do I need? Resellers permits, all this stuff. Like I was doing all the preparation stuff while still working, still like, you know, figuring out things out, but I was just, doing everything that I needed to do. Oh, this, okay, okay, I get this done. This costs $35 fee. This is this. This is the $800 fee for this LLC. This is blah, 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 blah. Like I was just doing all the things I had. So early preparation is what I had to do there. Um, then the next point while I'm doing all that, the, na the main thing to think about after that was number four, which is securing the startup capital, which, which is, uh, was very hard for me, okay? Um, I did break down how I, uh, how, uh, how I launched the business with minimal funds and we'll link that there and we'll dive deep into it. But cutting straight to the chase, how I started Perfect Tux, my startup capital came straight up from credit cards. That was my startup capital. That's what I did. Um, in that video, I break down a whole scenario, but long story short, I was able to get, um, uh, cashier check advance, 
zero APR for like 15 months. And I was able to write my check, like write, rough, write myself a check for my startup capital and some money that could just sit in the bank to like get me by because I knew I was ready to quit my job and I could pay some of my expenses. I was able to write myself a check. Again, high credit limits I had, great credit I had, all of that stuff to my why and leading up to this, now I was able to utilize it. I was able to tap into it. So securing my startup capital was it. Um, that was the way I did it. I did not have like a big old savings account. I didn't have no 401k I could tap into. It was it was credit cards. That's how I did it. And uh, the rest is history, okay? And um, the next step, pretty much at that point was pff, launch. Let's launch this thing. Uh, tied in with launching was feedback and continuous improvement, okay? Um, going into like, you know, working on a website, again, that's why I love e-commerce because it was like I was able to just work on that. I quit my job cold turkey December 2015. Uh, before I had a sale, before I had anything in the in Perfect Touch, Perfect Tux, the website launched in March of 2016. So for those three months, I just put the fine tunings on the website. It was just like, you know, I was already working on it. I was already grinding on it while I was working my other job and just doing it at nighttime. But now it was like, it was 24 seven. It was like, I woke up and it was like, I kept, I remember I kept my same habit. I remember, you know, my job at the time, I think I, you know, I started working at maybe 8.30 or something like that. Um, you know, 8.30 to five, you know, six or whatever, whatever it was at that time. But I kept that same schedule. Like I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't just relax and whatever. I woke up the next day, 8.30, I clocked in and I went to work and I just worked, work, 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 all to the end of the day. What well, the next day I woke up at eight o'clock, da, 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 da. I'm like, I was clocked in, clock out, clock in, clock out, but for myself. So I got everything ready and um, it was launch time. Put this thing in the universe. Um, so that's, I mean, that's pretty much where we at, like pretty much from idea to launch. Uh, like I said, it took me about eight months of idea to actually launching it. Um, and so, so the launch and what I mentioned before, like the feedback, it was very important to start getting feedback from real users, feedback from potential customers. I made a lot of changes with the website, made a lot of changes to my photos and the descriptions and the titles and things like that. And I was constantly making changes, constantly making changes. I say it all the time. If you start a business when everything is perfect, you started too late. You need to get it out there and start making adjustments, start getting feedback. And that's exactly what I did. Um, Yes, idea to launch for Perfect Tux, eight months. That's what it took me. Not boasting, not making nothing up, but I, I would say the biggest thing there was that I was ready. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to start a business. Once I identified that business, there was no stopping me. I also picked the business, and I've mentioned this a pretty several episodes, I picked the business in the industry for show that I knew from day one I could get in and compete at day one because I had no other choice, quit my job, I had to make a dollar, I'm on, I'm on uh, credit card money, and we gotta, <laughs> we gotta become profitable ASAP, okay? So um, that is the quick story of Idea to Launch for Perfect Tux. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like this video. Please subscribe to our channel. Hey, tell me about the business you you launched or the business you're planning on launching. Put that in the comments. I love to see it. I love to check it out. Until next time, I will catch you guys on the 9% show. Peace.